Hi. So I'm doing this from inside today. This is probably not going to be a short unless I break it up into little videos. What you can see on the screen is our barn camera. So we have a couple of them that we have direct power to and they are excellent for monitoring goats. So I wanted to kind of show this off. I'm hanging out inside instead of doing this from the barn because it is a hundred and three out right now. It is very hot. We are under heat wave. And apparently the real fuel is a hundred and seventeen or something. Now the barn itself is in the nineties. You can see we got a couple little fans hanging off pointed down at the babies right now. And there's two large fans up in the rafters. So they got air movement. Now, the babies are currently locked in, but mama's got access, even though she's laying in there to the outdoors. So, now, as to why the three babies are locked away from mom, well, as of yesterday, they're all officially bottle babies. Uh, the simplest reason why is because Kara can't support lactation right now. Um, and I'll get into the long reason why in a second. But all three little girls are doing great. They have full tummies and they have transitioned really well to the cow's milk mixture that we're using on them. They're eating hay and alfalfa pellets and a little bit of grain just perfectly and drinking lots of water in this heat. So don't worry about them. They're doing fantastic, which is a huge weight off of everybody's chest, to be honest. Now, as to Kara and why we had to pull the babies off, that's a little bit more complicated, and really it started about a week ago. So, last weekend we noticed that she looked like she was losing just a tiny bit of weight, something we try to keep an eye on with lactating mamas. So, I assessed her saw that she was probably a three out of five on the famancha, which is a way of checking the eyelid for um, how pink it is. Ideally, they should be a bright pink, almost a reddish pink. And that means that they're not anemic at all, and therefore there's no concerns, hopefully, with worms. So, the most common worm that goats get is a barber pole. It is a rather stubborn, nasty worm, and it gets in the intestinal lining and sucks a lot of blood up. So when we saw that she had lost a little bit of her score and looked like she was just a little bit anemic, not much, but just a bit, we decided to go ahead and um, figure out what we needed to worm her with and get that done. So we did so. Uh, and it looked like she was doing good for a few days. She was holding steady. I mean, goats lose weight, they don't gain it back very quickly. And they really shouldn't, because, um, like, you know, humans with losing weight, you lose it quickly, you gain it back quickly. So, you want to put weight on slowly and steadily. And at the same time, she was being nursed on, which was not helping. Um, it was kind of pulling her down a bit. So, we thought all was well until about Wednesday. Um, Tuesday she looked a little bit thinner, but we figured she was just taking longer to bounce back than we'd hoped. Um, and it was getting hotter this week too, which was not helping. Heat stress is a huge thing with livestock. So, but she had freeform hay, she was getting time in the pasture, we were bringing her in browse, obviously constantly, they have access to water. And she was still getting alfalfa pellets, sunflower seeds, and some grain. We did stop the grain midweek because we were concerned that maybe it was becoming a problem for her. Maybe it was upsetting her rumen or stomach, essentially, in a goat. Um, and then we hit Wednesday, and she was obviously much worse and very dehydrated. So today's Friday. Um, that was two days ago. We started giving her electrolytes and supportive care on Wednesday and we carried that into Thursday and obviously we're still carrying it on today so the best way to describe this situation is every goat has a rumen 
A rumen is similar to her stomach, but not exactly. So a rumen, a good analogy would be, is it's like a fireplace. You want it to be constantly putting off some heat or, you know, burning away, whether it's embers or it's a full-out blast. It should never go um, out. So when you have problems with worms and you worm them, Ideally, the goat will bounce back slowly and, you know, worry about it. Just, you know, they'll pick their weight back up, you know, keep drinking water. In Kara's case, even though we'd wormed her and that should have pushed her worm load low or, you know, helped remove a good hefty amount of it, she got very anemic. So by Wednesday, her gums were very pale. Um... And that can happen sometimes if the worm load is really high, like hers appeared to have been. They can get very anemic. It's kind of a shock to the system to remove all those worms. So she ended up with diarrhea, or scours is what they call in goats. And kind of between the diarrhea and the anemia, I think she got a little bit nauseous. And, well, she stopped eating. And it's the number one thing you never want to see in a ruminant. Because that's essentially like somebody coming along and dumping a cup of water on your fireplace. And, you know, you're either putting it out or you're threatening it. So, rumens who don't... Ruminants, is what a goat is, um, who don't eat, run into a big problem where their rumen might end up in... Pearlies, 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 do you? Essentially, it'll stop working. <laughs> My apologies. And that's really bad. It's kind of hard to get a rumen going again. So we were giving her probiotics. We were giving her electrolytes. We were doing our best to tempt her, but not use grain to do so. To make sure we didn't have her eating grain and it sitting on a quiet stomach and then fermenting and making the situation worse. She's been getting an iron supplement in vitamin B. And, to be honest, we don't know. Um, she looks like she's bouncing back today. She looks like she's staying a little bit fuller, but she's still not actively interested in eating. So, that's why she's separate from the babies. Of course, the heat is not helping. It's just one more compounded problem for the stress. Um... She's under a lot of supportive care, though. Uh, today, she actually doesn't look so dehydrated. It looks like the electrolytes and all the other supportive care we've utilized has really been helping, finally. Um, and we're really hoping she's turned a corner here. But I guess for anybody out there who watches this and also has livestock or goats, it's not just you. Livestock is hard. Um, you can do everything in your power, and then something as simple as warming a goat can knock them for a tizzy. And you can have a goat who's doing just fine at nursing kids, and that one problem can lead you to have a whole bunch of orphan babies, because the last thing anybody needs is to be, you know, nursing babies while you're trying to just keep yourself hydrated. So, but again, the little ones are doing great. Um, we got our fingers crossed that Mama's going to perk right back up here. And hopefully all will be well. But on days like this, when it's this hot, I am so grateful that I have this system in place. Where I can literally sit on the couch and keep an eye on my goats and make sure that everything's looking good and nothing's taking a turn. So... This was definitely longer than that normal little minute I do for shorts. Uh, you may not see many videos this week. We're battling both the heat and, you know, obviously goat health. So our focus is definitely aimed in the right place right now and not so much on the little shorts. So, all right. Hope everybody is staying cool.